Hey, what's going on YouTube? I'm Danny with Danny's Tech Channel. I'm doing a video in the middle of the week here. I usually don't do this, but CES 2022 happened in Las Vegas today. The three major companies, Intel, AMD, and NVIDIA, all had press conferences today on the first day of CES. So I thought I would wrap up all this information for you. That way you don't have to hunt it down on your own. Roll that intro. I'd say AMD had the most exciting information from the CES press release because they just threw out a slew of, of products. The mobile GPU lineup is introducing five new M series GPUs and three new S series GPUs. Now the S stands for slim, not super. It was kind of a confusing naming to me because a lot of people are gonna think of the S as being super like when Nvidia did it. But the S series GPUs are gonna be for like light gaming notebooks and stuff like that or tablets. And the M series GPUs are gonna be their mobile variants of their desktop GPUs. So it's gonna be a discrete graphics built into the laptop that's gonna give you solid gaming performance. AMD's new mobile CPUs will bring with them USB 4, which is up to 40 gigabits per second transfer speed, PCI Express 4.0, DDR5, and Wi-Fi 6E. These CPUs will handle HDMI 2.1 and be DisplayPort 2 ready whenever that arrives. If you check out the chart here, some of the CPUs that they have, videocards.com does a really good job of outlining things and laying all the information out in a nice, neat little chart. So I'm gonna totally give them credit. I'll leave links below for them. But they've got two breakdowns of it here. You can see it's got the U series and the H series. The U is gonna be the thin and powerful for mobility. That's gonna be like your tablets and your thin and light notebooks. But you can see it's got the Ryzen 5, Ryzen 3, and all the way up to Ryzen 7. You can get a 6800U with a Zen 3 Plus and RDNA 2 based graphics up to eight cores and 16 threads, and it boosts all the way to 4.7 gigahertz. The H series CPUs are all gonna have RDNA 2 based graphics, and they go from a Ryzen 5 6600 HS all the way up to a Ryzen 9 6980 HX. That's eight cores and 16 threads. Most of those high end, the H series ones are gonna be for gamers and creators. They're almost all eight cores, 16 threads. And you can see on there, it boosts up to five gigahertz. That's incredible for a laptop. That's the highest speed CPU that AMD has made so far. Another thing AMD introduced in the press release is the RX 6500 XT. This is gonna feature a Navi 24 GPU with 1024 streaming processors paired with four gigabytes of 18 gigabits per second GDDR6 memory. It's gonna have a game clock speed of 2.6 gigahertz and a boost clock of 2.8 gigahertz. They compared it to a GTX 1650 and RX 570 uh, 1080p high settings, but a 1650 is the lowest end GPU that Nvidia released in the last generation of GPUs. Uh, they weren't really overall impressive. That's why a lot of people held on to the series before that, like the 1066 gigs. People are still running those. Maybe you're still running one of those because there was nothing better that popped up that was worth the money. Now it has four gigs of VRAM. They did that to eliminate crypto miners wanting to buy these cards. This is gonna be a partner card only design. There's no reference model for this. And it comes in at an MSRP of $199 USD. They're gonna be available January 19th. Only partner cards is only gonna be through like MSI, Gigabyte, uh, Asus, those types of companies. There's gonna be no reference style PCB like the one you see in the picture from AMD. One of the most exciting things that AMD released information on is their Ryzen 7 5800X 3D. They've been talking about this for a while now. They said, we're gonna do 3D vCache stacking on the CPU. It's kind of complicated, but really all they did was take a 5800X and they stacked more vCache on it, the L3 cache, which makes AMD processors really good for gaming. AMD's L3 cache, the 5800X has 32 megabytes of it. Well, now the 3D version of the 5800X is gonna have 64 megabytes of it. They're saying it can go toe to toe with the 12900K. At this point, I really don't know. It's gonna work with AMD's 400 series and 500 series motherboards. There's no word on pricing yet. And AMD is saying that it's gonna be a spring of 2022 launch for this chip. The last thing they talked about is their Zen 4 CPUs. They kind of just did a little teaser of it. 
Zen 4 CPUs are gonna be codenamed Raphael. They're supposed to come out the end of 2022. What AMD teased with the Raphael architecture here, Zen 4, is a five nanometer process node. They showed the new socket and CPU design, which you can see here. They're gonna be switching to LGA like Intel from PGA. And those CPUs, like I said, are gonna be coming the second half of 2022. So expect like September, October timeframe. That's usually when new CPU launches happen. Okay, so the award for least information given at CES goes to NVIDIA. They really didn't give much information. I was actually very disappointed in NVIDIA at CES. They teased the RTX 3090 Ti, or TI as they like to call it. They didn't really say anything about it other than they'll give us information later on this month. We already know the information. They should have just leaked it because you can find it online already. The 3090 Ti is gonna be the fully unlocked die. It's gonna be a little bit better than a 3090, but it's gonna consume 100 watts more power um, and no one's gonna be able to afford it because it's probably gonna be like $2,000. The thing that NVIDIA did talk about that I'm kind of excited about, I'm not really sure yet, is the RTX 3050. The RTX 3050 is gonna come in at $249 USD. It's gonna be available on January 27th. And they did a little bit of comparing to the GTX 1050 Ti and 1050. I thought that was a little weird because it's not showing any kind of numbers based on more recent technologies. The 1050 is pretty old now. And of course the 3050 is gonna look way better than a 1050. I think they should have shown a GTX 1660 Super. I did a little bit of number crunching here. The RTX 3050 has 2,560 CUDA cores versus the RTX 3060's 3,584. You can see the RT cores are 28 in the 3060 and 20 in the 3050, 12 gigs versus eight gigs. The thing that gets me is you see the 3060 has a 192-bit memory bus. The 3050 only has a 128-bit memory bus. That's gonna make the performance drop drastically. I don't know how close in performance that's gonna be to the 3060, especially with the price difference, because the MSRP of the 3060 is 329. The 3050 is gonna be 249. But keep an eye out for the card. I think it's gonna be a neat intro to the card, but it does have eight gigs of VRAM, so crypto miners may try to snag it up. You might not be able to get a hold of one anyway. So that's all the information I got from NVIDIA. Let's talk about Intel. Intel gets the award for most disappointing. Well, they gave us information on more laptop processors, just like AMD did. I think Intel knew AMD was gonna talk about laptops, so they were like, we gotta release our laptop information. It's really what it was. It was a ton of AMD laptop information and a lot of Intel laptop information. So if you're looking to get a laptop, wait for spring, like a month or two, because both companies are gonna be coming out with some really good stuff when it comes to the laptop market. The 12th gen mobile H series CPU lineup is made for enthusiasts. The 12th gen mobile U series laptops are gonna be thin and lights, which are gonna be very small or tablets, that type of thing. The H series lineup is kind of interesting because it has the hybrid architecture, just like the desktop CPUs in the 12th gen Intel processors. They'll have up to six performance cores and eight efficiency cores, and they can reach five gigahertz, just like AMD. Another thing Intel introduced today, and probably the most exciting thing to me, was their 65 watt and 35 watt 12th gen desktop processors. They're available right now on Newegg, so if you want one, just click the link below and go over to Newegg and grab one for yourself. Now, Intel also released the information about the new motherboard chipsets that will follow up with their processors. Because they released the non-K variant processors, like the i5-12400F, they released the H670, H610, and B660 chipset. I think the B660 is gonna be the most impressive one. 660, that, that's weird to say. It's gonna be the most impressive because you can pair it with an i5-12400F and the B660, and you've got overclocking support for RAM, which Intel didn't have in the past, but now that they added it, it kind of competes with AMD. So you can slap some 3000, 3200, 3600 uh, megahertz memory into there with the 12400F and pop in a dedicated GPU, and you've got yourself a solid gaming computer for pretty cheap, actually. Maybe that's something I'll do on the channel here. 
Overall, I'm pretty disappointed with CES. I don't think it was very impressive. I don't think any of these companies brought anything really amazing. I mean, it was a lot of laptop stuff. They teased a little bit about CPUs from Intel and AMD. Nvidia brought nothing. I mean, they gave the least information possible, but none of them are bringing anything really exciting to the table. So sorry to report, it wasn't that great. What I'd like to be picking up for myself is possibly an RTX 3050 or a 5600 XT. I like the GPU style of things. It's hard to get a hold of GPUs, so everybody's interested in them the most. And the cheaper GPUs are always the bigger sellers. Hopefully I didn't disappoint you too much with the CES coverage so far. Um, I just wanted to get the information out to you that I had heard and try to summarize it in as quick and short of a video as possible. So as I always say, I'm Danny with Danny's Tech Channel, and I'll see you in the next video. Why don't we go back to, why don't we go back to your bed?